This is a difficult text to understand, or is it? You've heard this passage before, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And I have seen, I can't tell you how many times I've seen and heard people abuse the text or just get it wrong. And it's really not that difficult of a text to understand. So if we go there to Matthew 11, verse 12, from the days of John the Baptist until now, look what it says, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and violent men or the violent take it by force. What in the world does that mean? Now, I've heard people say that what this is, is that we suffer violence, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, Christians, the church, whatever. I've heard it said different ways that we suffer violence and we ought to take it back by force. We ought to fight back. We ought to push back. But that's not what the text says. One, he says the violent, these violent men, that's not us. They take it by force. Take what by force and when? So let's go back a little further and let's start now. Remember, he's talking about John the Baptist. He says, this is, remember, this is John the Baptist going before them. Starting in verse 10, this is the one about whom it is written, behold, I send my messenger ahead of you, John the Baptist, who will prepare a way for you, before you. Truly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is the least of the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Then he says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. So how long has this been happening? From the days of John the Baptist until now. So from John's coming up till now, the kingdom of violence, uh, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Are we saying that only violent things have happened since John the Baptist up to the time that Jesus is speaking? No, he's not saying that. He's speaking about the way that people want to get into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. So we've got all these folks that are pushing, that are trying different ways to make it into the kingdom. Remember, John comes saying, repent. Why? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And you've got a lot of people coming, those that will ultimately be saved, and even those that are unworthy, pushing, trying to find physical means to make it into the kingdom. He says, but uh, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, John himself is Elijah who was to come. He who has an ear, let them hear. Now he brings up Elijah because what is Elijah doing? Elijah is proclaiming just like John for people basically to kind of get themselves ready and they won't listen. Now here we've got John or who is like an Elijah uh, who was to come. And so we've got John preaching about, obviously, for Jesus, whoever has an ear, let them hear. Now, who is he speaking specifically to? To the Jews, to them. They don't want to hear. They are looking for other means. By the way, let's look at this word really briefly. The violent take it by force. The word for bi violent is this word, um, biastai. Now, we're going to see this word again if we go to Luke 16, verse 16. The law and the prophets were proclaimed until John... Since that time, the kingdom of heaven has been preached. So when does the kingdom of heaven get preached? This gospel that we're having at the time of John. That's what he's speaking of. And everyone is forcing his way into it. Everyone is trying to push their way into it. Something has changed. There's been a shift and folks are trying to get in. But now, how do they think to get in? They think to get in by means of works, by means of action. Forcing it. Now, some by ridiculous means, maybe paying to get in, some by baptize me to get in, some by I got to do this work, do that. I've got to keep these different sacraments and ordinances to, to get in all these different ways to go about doing it. And so his point is that the kingdom has now is now being preached and everyone, all of these people are forcing in. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one stroke of a letter of the law to fail. Well, why would you even bring that up? Well, what does the law require? Oh, by the way, who is going to, not, not to say nullify the law, who is going to fulfill the law according to Romans 10, 4? And also Jesus makes the statement, I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. I want to, he's going to be the end of it, to perfect it, to bring about the fullness of the law. What does the law require? The law requires that there be this, for this atonement to be made, there has to be this covering, canceling 
and reconciliation. Covering of sin, in other words, the sins are no longer there, so something or someone has to take away the sins of the world. That's why John says in John 1, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Then there has to be this canceling of the debt. The debt has to be paid. In other words, the payment of the debt, and as far as God's concerned, must be blood. Who's going to do that? Well, Jesus is going to do that. That's why in Colossians says that the debt was nailed to the cross and why Jesus on his way out says to tell us that it is finished. That was used customarily as a financial term to say that there's no more debt owed. And so what must what is Jesus going to do in fulfilling the law? He will play the part of the high priest who brings about who makes atonement for the people by means of taking away their sin and by paying the debt. And so this is preached by John. And so if you want to make it in, you've got to adhere to what the preach were to say, what the gospel is. That is the only way in. You cannot get in any other way. You cannot try to make it in at this time under the cross by his death, burial, and resurrection. You won't make it in that way by trying to keep the law by means of actions. You violent men, you men who want to do it by in a forceful fashion, and doesn't necessarily always mean in a violent, forceful fashion, but it can be. Uh, but he's saying the only way to get in is by this means, and you're trying another means, a forceful means. And so the kingdom of God suffers since, since the time of John up till now. That Jesus speaking, really, truth be told, I guess you could probably consider it even to today. But since then, since John's day, when he's making the way straight for the one to come, preaching the gospel about Jesus, at that point in time, the kingdom of God has suffered violence and the violent men want to take it by force. Now, the question is, do they actually take it by force? Obviously, the answer to that question is no. They do not take anything by force. There is no way to make it in except by faith alone in him. And then he will baptize you into his kingdom. That is the only way. And so that is what this passage means. The kingdom of God suffers violent. He tells us when, why, and the violent men try to take it by force and they do not succeed. Only by faith can you make it in. Amen. <music>